Okay, this video is a book review. The book is called Fat, Stressed, and Sick. The author's name is Katherine Reed. She's a PhD protein biochemist, and her big incredible achievement was her daughter had autism, and she figured out that it was due to excessive amounts of glutamate in the diet, and she removed the glutamate, and the child got better. And I do think it's true, and she's not just making it up, because there were videos of her daughter and the description of it, it all works, sounds real. I worked at a camp when I was young, taking care of uh, autistic kids. So everything rang true <clears throat> from her description and from her signs and her videos. I'll put a link to her TED Talk uh, down below. The first point I want to share with you is the concept of a bliss point. Michael Moss was the author who sort of popularized this idea. The deal is that the food companies, big food with all this processed food, it's a trillion dollar industry, and they do a lot of research to figure out how to get people addicted to a food. And they sort of try to titrate just the right amount, a synergistic combination of fat, salt, and sugar, like high fructose corn syrup. And they also work on the texture of it to get a mouthfeel. And then later on, she is the big one who figured out uh, what's going on with the manufactured free glutamate. So all of these things are titrated to achieve the so-called bliss point, you know, food, culinary, savory, ecstasy, uh, to get people addicted to the food. Okay, now here's the lady. Her name is Katherine Reed. She's a PhD. Her field of specialty is protein biochemistry. So she was sort of the perfect person to study glutamate. It's amino acid and proteins. Okay, the book just came out 2023. I do think it's a very good book. Um, she has a great TED Talk. I think her website's unblindmymind.org. I'm pretty sure about that. I'll double check it and put a link down below. Um, she shows videos of her kid, and it all seems right for the child having autism. Um, she initially did the gluten-free and casein-free diet, and the kid showed significant improvement, but still you know, was a long way from being cured. She came to the conclusion later that's because the protein gluten is named after glutamate and has about 25% glutamate in it, whereas casein has about 20% glutamate in it, 21%. Okay, and so by removing those from the diet, you lower the child's intake of glutamate. Okay, she then removed MSG from the child's diet and saw more improvement, but still not a cure. Then once she figured out the deal on MFG, that means manufactured free glutamate, the child was cured um, soon after that. Okay, the child's eye contact became normal, her social behavior became normal, her conversation became normal, whereas previous, it was not. Um, in the human body, all that matters is glutamate. The MS monosodium is just the sodium salt of glutamate, which is negatively charged when deprotonated. Okay, but all that matters is glutamate, because glutamate is an excitatory neurotransmitter in the brain. Over 90% of brain neurotransmitters are glutamate. Glutamate being excitatory turns things on, activates the postsynaptic neuron. And the opposite neurotransmitter is GABA. GABA turns everything off in the brain. So glutamate's about 90% of brain neurotransmitters. GABA is about 5% of brain neurotransmitters. And then the other neurotransmitters, all the famous ones, are really pretty minor in their amounts in comparison. So you can remember them. I made up the mnemonic SAND, S-A-N-D. So S for serotonin, A for acetylcholine, N for norepinephrine, and D for dopamine, okay? So each one of those, just, just think of it as being about 1%. They're sort of neuromodulators. But the real on-off switches are glutamate and GABA in the brain in terms of neurotransmitters. Nowadays, most of the dietary glutamate is what you would call manufactured free glutamate, meaning that you'll start out with a protein that has, let's say, a lot of glutamate in it. Like uh, glut gluten has, you know, again, about 25%. In one place she says 25%, in another place she says 30%, because I've gone through some of her papers and her, and her lectures and all this stuff. In the book, she calls it 30%, but in a recent, more recent lecture, she says it's 25%. But either way, it's a lot, because there's 20 amino acids. So if there was an even amount of every amino acid, each protein would have 5% of each. So for a protein to have, you know, 20% and up, that's an extraordinarily high amount of glutamate. And then what she's saying is that when you process it, you break the uh, protein into individual amino acids. Normally a protein, when it's in the body functioning, is a long string of amino acids. It's like a necklace of beads. Each bead is an amino acid. Okay, but when you process it, you, you chop up that protein so you break up the beads into individual beads rather than being all strung together on a necklace, so to speak. 
And um, she says, the reason why we like the taste of that, in fact, we love the taste of it. We have taste receptors for MSG in our mouth. They're called umami taste receptors. But we also have them in our small bowel. And she says that tasting the um, glutamate in our mouth or our small intestine causes activation of reward neurotransmitters in our brain. She says we are wired to seek it, that our ancestors always worried about starving. And evolutionarily, being able to find a good protein source was something that might help our ancestors to survive. And because of that and the reward transmitters, we love the taste of it. It makes us addicted to the food. And the more free glutamate there is in the food, the more addicted we get. I'm going to show you a picture in just a moment on the next page that will explain this in more detail. But I'm kind of going through this text here because this is really a eureka moment, an academic orgasm to understand this, that basically the MSG doesn't really matter. What matters is the glutamate, and the companies know this. And so with processed food, they, they chop up these proteins as much as they can so you get this giant bolus of glutamate in your mouth activating all these umami taste receptors and you become addicted to the food. Um, anybody who's got kids knows what that's like where they're just addicted to terrible junk food and you really can't talk them out of it. And they, they you know, young people aren't worried at all about sickness so they just ignore all the health advice. Okay, um, nowadays most of the MFG is manufactured from corn uh, just because it's so cheap. Uh, these are high uh, gluten containing, glutamate containing proteins are things like gluten, casein, whey, and soy proteins. Uh, soy is like I think 19%. That's a lot of uh, glutamate. Okay, in 1970, the world production of MSG was 13,000 tons. By 2022, 3.5 million tons. That's an incredible expansion of amount. And the reason is the food companies know it works. It gets you addicted to your, their food, so you buy more. It also, because people love the taste of it, they eat more. And because they're eating more calories per day, I think she suggested they're eating about as many as 500 more calories per day. They get fat. Okay. In research studies, you need fat mice to do all kinds of research. So she says, a standard way to produce a fat mouse in research studies is to just feed them the glutamate. Okay. Um, she says that excessive free glutamate is associated with increased risk of obesity, diabetes, hypertension, autism, ADHD, anxiety, dementia, and cancer. This is, I, by the way, I put page numbers in here. So this is pages 123 to 49, 149 of her book, Fat, Stressed, and Sick. Um, let's see. It's a flavor enhancer, the glutamate, so people buy more. Um, when, when it's put into aqueous solution, which just means water, the normal solutions of the body, the sodium ion, you know, Na plus from the monosodium, it just dissociates, it moves away from the remainder of the glutamate. So that really doesn't matter. What matters is the glutamate. Okay, in the 1960s, John Olney, PhD, genius scientist, he showed that MSG was a neurotoxic ex excitotoxin. He actually did a ton of good things to try to let people know about this because it was used to be put in the baby foods. Um, and he wrote a bunch of papers, gave a bunch of famous lectures, and um, uh, Russell Blaylock writes a lot about the good things that John Olney did in his other book, Excitotoxins. That one came out in 1997, and it was a landmark great book. Okay, I think this is a great book as well. Probably not as good as Blaylock's book because... She, you know, she's not a clinical physician. She's not involved in neuroscience. So what I sense with her writing is that she's got a sense of all these problems that uh, excess glutamate causes on the brain, but she doesn't know the brain well enough to put it all together. Okay, but still, you know, this is an incredible achievement, what she did, figuring out that it don't really matter about the MSG. It don't really matter about these different ways that it's that uh, the glutamate snuck into the food. The important thing that matters is how much free glutamate is there. And once you come to that conclusion, you're going to see that the only thing that makes sense is to avoid processed food because there's no way around it. It's in almost every processed food, and it's typically in multiple ways added to the same processed food. Um, okay, let's see what else. Oh, the companies after only, you know, gave MSG sort of a bad name in the mind of the public, they then started to hide it in all kinds of ways. Natural flavors, artificial flavors, you'll see the words extract, malt, hydrolyzed, fermented, ultra-pasteurized, isolated. All of these things are just ways to hide more glutamate. They're not just ways to hide glutamate, but they are ways to hide more free glutamate in a food stuff to get you addicted to it. And it's in almost, almost every ingredient you could think of, she claims, 
can or does have increased glutamate hidden in the food. Carrageenan, kamut, guar gum, xanthan gum, citrate, citric acid, collagen, maltodextrin, corn, soy, artificial sweeteners, textured protein, tofu, dextrose. It goes on and on. The list is much longer than what I just gave here. Um, she says the main dietary source of free glutamates comes from ultra-processed foods. And so, again, the companies, they just do a whole bunch of things because the more they process it, the more they chop up the, and free up those individual glutamate uh, amino acids so your mouth just goes crazy with this stuff. Um, she also says whenever a research paper comes out criticizing glutamate in food or MSG, MFG, the trillion-dollar food industry, they just buy a journal, buy the scientists, publish a bunch of fake studies so they can easily say, oh, gee, you know, what do you mean a bad paper? We've got 10 times as many papers saying it's good. So you, you, you're, you're never, that's the problem with modern research. Almost all of it, the vast majority of it is fake. And it's just paid for by corporations. And the desperate poor scientists, they're going to say anything the company wants. That's the only way they get uh, any type of repeat business. So anyways, what's the take-home point from all this knowledge? Avoid all processed food. Um, and if, watch out for personal care products uh, that you have to taste, like mouthwash, chewing gum, a lot of toothpaste. They literally put free glutamate in there to make you like the way it tastes. And I would never eat protein powders where they've chopped up those proteins so much and they're full of free glutamate. Okay, the only processed food I would ever eat is single ingredient plain oatmeal or quinoa because if there's more than one ingredient, they can put uh, added things you don't want like extra glutamate and other things into that second ingredient and they don't have to tell you. So it's pretty important to do this for your kids. Like a baby doesn't even have an intact blood-brain barrier uh, hardly at all in comparison with an older person. So they're very vulnerable to it. And they used to put this stuff into baby foods. Okay, a lot of old people have had uh, damage to their blood-brain barrier due to uh, strokes, diabetes, hypertension. Um, a lot of young guys get uh, traumatic brain injury from playing sports, and they really should be avoiding this stuff during their recovery phase. They really should avoid it all the time, but especially during their recovery phase because after traumatic brain injury, the blood-brain barrier is more permeable and more vulnerable to this. But excessive amounts of psychological stress and caffeine and all that and sleep deprivation can also cause transient uh, increased permeability of the blood-brain barrier. So it's all bad. Okay, now this diagram here is just to show you what this is all about on the MFG, manufactured free glutamate. So you start out with the original source protein that has a relatively high amount of, of glutamate. For example, gluten's about 25 to 30%, uh, that's like a bread protein, casein, the milk protein, and whey, but casein, the milk protein is about 20% glutamate residues. What that means is one out of every five will be glutamate. When it's 25% gluten, that means one out of every four amino acids in the protein will be <clears throat> glutamate. Soy is about 19% glutamate, and that can be used sometimes to make um, high amounts of manufactured free glutamate. Also, whey is commonly put in these bodybuilder, weightlifter protein formulas. Okay, so you start out with the original amino acids uh, all strung together here. There's a little connector point uh, in purple, stringing together all the amino acids. And then these are just typical processing steps like ultra-pasteurization of milk, enzyme lysis to break through these uh, peptide bonds, um, extract is what they'll call it, you know, extract the protein from some other food stuff. And all of that stuff is breaking up these individual peptide bonds to free up these individual amino acids, hydrolysis, especially acid hydrolysis, so um, fat separation, fermentation of corn. All of these things are going to free up the glutamate. So here's what it looks like. The free glutamate means these glutamate amino acids are now free. They're separate. They're not connected to the other amino acids. And when they're free, they cause much more um, activation of the taste receptors in the mouth and the small bowel. And so in the person's primitive brain, they're like, wow, we just found, you know, the, a great source of, of protein. We need to eat more of this stuff. Um, you know, all these reward transmitters, get neurotransmitters get released in the brain, and that helps the person to become addicted to the food. So this concept of manufactured free glutamate is a big deal. The ultra-processed food does this all the time. It's their standard operating procedure for making money, getting people addicted to food. So the smart move is just avoid all these processed foods. You know, eat whole foods. Uh, eat only whole plant foods, things where there's one ingredient. I don't eat anything where there's more than one ingredient. I'll never eat anything with more than one ingredient because they can put almost whatever they want in that second ingredient and don't even have to tell you. So anyways, um, hope this was helpful.